I'll make another video here and then possibly do a little bit of discussion here. As I'm gonna, I've read um, a lot of content since I last saw you, so I wanna, I want to uh, go into that a little bit. Um, I wish I could go into the into the critique of pure reason, um, cause that's something I was really interested in. But I've you know I've read the critique of the power of judgment. I've read critique of practical reason as well as the groundwork. Of the, well, I read before the really groundwork, but I want to talk about something that was that's in the critique of practical reason. Um, it has to do with the theory of postulates and. Um, it has to do with um, pursuing a certain highest good, a sum of bottom. Um, because Kant says in the, in the Critique of Practical Reason, as well as the Metaphysics of Morals and the Groundwork of the Metaphysics of Morals, that we have the duty to pursue the, this Metaphysics of Morals. And um, we have this duty that we have to, we have to pursue the highest good. And we have, we, have to, we have to do that, that's for sure, we have to. And, um, and I guess, with the, with the, he, he developed a, a, towards a supreme principle of morality, to where, you know, we have this categorical imperative, which, if this is an unconditional, uh, moral theory, which, which, regardless of whatever your condition is, that you have to obey it, you have to do, you, if you, 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 you have to do it according to, according to Kant. And you have to pursue the highest good. You have to do this. There's no way that there's no way that you can't not pursue it. I mean, you know, you have to pursue this. And you know, we have these. We have this highest good that has to be it has to be pursued. So we have that. And what this. Um, this presupposes a few things. You know, the theory of postulates is that the, the, the fact that we're supposed to pursue the highest good, you know, that, that we have a duty and ought to, um, implies it, it creates a couple postulates that come through this. Um, if we have to do this, if we, you know, this is, if, there's an, if there's a necessity that we have to pursue this as good, then um, we have a few postulates, postulates about, about, you know, metaphysical and epistemological um, uh, postulates that will come out of such a because in the metaphysics and morals the uh, groundwork and as well as the critique of practical reason he truly gives a really good reason why uh, we have to pursue such a highest good and why, why we have to go after that why we can't why we can't just you know do whatever why we have to pursue this highest good and um, I guess I find this I find this uh, theory of patchless not that great because I'm it, so I have since gone against uh, the Kantian highest good. I'm not really into that anymore. I'm more into a virtue ethic kind of thing. I'm more into that. I guess, and I guess I really think this is a great idea. This is definitely great, and I think that. When possible, we we should follow the, the the categorical imperative. That's definitely true. And I don't think that there's a highest good. I don't think that well there there is definitely, but I don't think that for one, I don't think we have we have possibility of pursuing it. I don't. I don't think that we there is possibility for us to pursue it. I think there's just there is just um, the fact that we have to, I, I guess this is difficult, I need to do another video about virtue ethics and sort of go into that more, because the reason I brought this up is because there is, the reason I, the reason I brought this up about Kant is that if we make certain, uh, if we prove, you know, say that certain things about morality, and you know, what we should do in morality, it presumes certain metaphysical th things, which is thus the, thus the metaphysics of morals, and this leads to certain things that are that would be true if the, given this highest principle of good, some of bottom. And I guess I want to talk about morality and its relation to 
uh, astrology and, and metaphysics and um, stuff like that. Um, because, first of all, um, the fact that we have to pursue the highest good and that it is, it is our duty, this, we have the postulate of, of our immortality. Now, the, the reason why that is is that the highest good is something that we cannot ever achieve in our physical lifetime. It's a, the highest good, the sum, the, the sum of bottom, is very, it is a, um, it's a very almost, uh, I want to say, ungettable type of goal, because we are not uh, holy beings, we're not things that are going to, you know, do well in, in you know, with, with respect to the, the, the categorical imperative, you know, we're going to try to be utilitarians. And I guess what I, what I want to say is that just that immortality does kind of, would, would kind of come from that, but I guess, you know, it, it should because that, 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 that principle is really holy, and that's a really holy concept. But, uh, and then I guess that would be, in, but then that, that, comes, that comes back to the validity, to the validity of this highest good principle, which I think is questionable. Next, the next postulate that comes from this highest good is the belief that we're free. Kant says that, we, that if we have the possibility of choosing the highest good, then we are free, and we have freedom. And that, I think, is a better, it's a better uh, postulate to make from this. It's better because, it's better because um, we have, it's very observable that we have ethical choice. It's very observable that we have the choice to be moral and you know, to, to, to do ethical things. Because there are people who just, you know, do our hedonists and uh, do all that. And then there are people who you know, might follow the categorical imperative or follow some sort of virtue ethic. So I think that that is good. I mean, it's. I think that, that, that that's a better inference, it's a better, better postulate to make. Um, and I guess that that's just because if we have a if we have any kind of highest good at all, um, then which I, I think I think we do. There is a, there is one somewhere, but we're not exactly obligated to follow it. It, it doesn't matter if you're a Christian or whatever. It's just you know, we're not. It's just it's not possible for us to. It's possible for us to you know gain up our you know through practice. It's possible for us to build our disposition. It's possible for us to <coughs> to build our attunement and. Big build moral practical wisdom, and as well as this is this is this attunement that we have inside of ourselves. It's a virtue ethic sort of thing, and moves towards this eudaimonia of flourishing happiness, of it, happiness in a different in a, in a different sense. And I think that the, the fact that there is these sort of split ideas and what what's moral and what's you know good good, good to do, that shows that there is some sort of higher good, if not highest, that thus we have food. I think we are. That's a better one, I think. Now, the next one is a little bit worse. It's not as, uh, you know, it might be even worse than the immortality thing. The next one is the, um, inference that God, that God exists. This is the moral argument. Uh, it's very well known as a moral argument for God. This is because, um, this is, this is the, uh, essence of, of the argument here. <clears throat> The, there's the ought that we ought to try to pursue the highest good, the sum of bond. And then there's a famous, famous line by Kant. It's called ought implies can. Ought implies can. If you ought, ought to do something, then that, 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 that means that it's possible too. Now, I want to think about the idea of ought implies can. Um, first of all, who is saying that you ought, ought, to do, ought to do that? And first of all, is it possible for you to you know, I mean, it, it's possible that you're being told that you ought to, do, ought to do something that you can't do. So, I don't know, that's... And I guess, ought is a different sort of thing that needs to be questioned before you can say that, that ought implies can't. But, and then, because ought implies can, that means that 
there's some sort of um, metaphysical elements to the reason that there's the highest good that there is to follow. There's causality, there are certain natural properties and stuff like that that's allowing you to um, have, the, have the possibility of um, following such a, such a good, such a good. And then, you know, that means that if there's, you know, metaphysical, metaphysical elements there, then there's overarching metaphysical elements there, which which means where could all those things come from? Thus, God. God exists. So, the pro problem there, there is that um, there, well, it's true too. There are certain elements out there, like like causality and stuff. That's you know, not being fully shown to its full extent, which is true, I think. But this is just another problem. It's another false argument for God. Here's the only good argument for God. And this is a personal thing that can be can be proven proven from person to person. I um, God has shown himself to me and uh, that's the way I feel about it. And I don't really can't really I can't really explain it to you. God God showed himself to me and I feel him in me, so that's just the way it is. So I don't know. So overall, we have these three postures that come from the principle of the highest good. Um, so I don't know. I have a problems with the idea of the highest good. First of all, I don't think that any more absolute. I'm going to go with the Werner Marx type of thing. Um, I'm going to say that we should not put any moral absolute or moral. Um, uh, we shouldn't put anything moral, metaphysically moral, on a pedestal, first of all. And if we do that, then there's no possibility of, of, of pursuing it. Um, and if, if, you, if, if you're going to be the logical, I, I would think that W.D. Ross or Thomas Gamble would, 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 be, would be a better a better way to go. But, uh, I don't know, that's just, that's just my thought on that. But, and I guess another, I guess that's just another more another argument for God and I guess that's just the, probably the best thing that comes out of that is um, the freedom thing so I think if we have I mean the I mean the highest there there is a there is a higher good out there that comes from sort of virtuous um, virtuous ethic where you know there's build up and there's disposition and, and attunement of you know good but uh I just think that I think that if that there's something that there's well, let's just first of all let's assume that there is the a higher good than most there's a higher good than most people ascribe to uh, there's not a highest good there's no slim and bottom there's a, a sort of higher good that's, that's maybe higher than most people have that's that people can actually you know visually see in people of depth that people ascribe to um, we have that, and if we have the possibility of following that, then I think we don't have morality, first of all. I mean, I mean, immortality, we don't really have. We don't have immortality because, you know, we can, we can achieve that. People have, have achieved it. There's a problem with Kant's, um, putting something up in the air which hasn't been, been achieved yet. And if it has been, been achieved, let's say, in an afterlife, how the hell does he know he know about it? He doesn't, he, he can't, you know, just say, oh, there's a highest good somewhere. And, first of all, where does the good end? Where, is there an end point where that good ends, where, where you can't get, where, the, where you can't get any more good? I mean, I think that's difficult, to, that's, I have, I have difficulty with the problem of the highest good. I have a, I don't have as much problem with, with supreme principle of, of morality or a fundamental law of, pra of pure practical reason, thus the formula of universal law. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's great. But I have a problem with the Zimba bottom. I don't, I don't like it because you're creating, you're doing metaphysics. Except you're, do, you're doing metaphysics in morality, which which is um, false, false, not false, but um, problematic 
metaphysics is what it is. So, if we can't have a highest good, if we have the high, the highest, we have the higher good that people have actually, you know, gotten to, then we have immortality. We have no, no immortality at all because we have seen the highest good possible. So seeing people do certain things, that's the highest good we've seen. So, um, which is definitely not the highest good in the world, because it's possible for there to be, be, to be more good than, than that. There is. So we can't say that that's the highest good, because it's, it's just the highest good we've seen. So we, can, we can't just say that, that, that that's because, that, uh, because that's the highest we've seen, that that's the highest that there is. Uh, there might be a higher good. So this is the highest that we've seen, so we can't say that we're, that we're immortal. But I think that we can say that, that, that we're free. Basically, we are free to choose the highest, the highest sort of good between the lower sort of consequential kind of good. So I don't know, that's... I don't know. And then for God... Um, first of all, I think if we... Um, I don't think we ought to do anything. There's, there's, aren't, uh, there aren't really oughts that are morally absolute. There are no moral absolute, objective morality. There's no laws like that. There's no oughts. So, I guess what I'm thinking is that we don't have oughts. We have choices. We have choice. We don't have ought. Oh, I have duty or ought to do cer a certain thing. I have choices when whether I want to go down a better path or a less better path. And that's freedom. So I don't think that freedom would be would would work well with the God part. So I think that the theory of postulates is kind of fault, faulty, so that the just in that the immortality and the God thing fall apart. So I don't know. I'm gonna come back to I'm gonna do some more I'm gonna talk about more some more cons. I'm gonna talk about some practical reason stuff and talk about um, his, his ideas of happiness probably soon and I'm gonna you know I'm gonna do some some Jean Paul Sartre I'm gonna do, do some Simone de Beauvoir and um, some ex existentialism and I'm gonna probably do some uh, Kant's critique of, uh, critique of the power of judgment do some, do some aesthetics there and relate that to some ex existentialism and then I might do some um, more phenomenology is Jean-Paul Sartre's uh, transcendence trans 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 of the ego and his uh, intentionality. So, I'm going down that path a little bit. So, thank you. Have a great day.